Hi, I'm Ethan Weiner. I've been a professional audio engineer and musician for 50 years. I've produced dozens of educational videos and hosted workshops for the Audio Engineering Society, plus many colleges and audio clubs. My book, The Audio Expert, serves the audio technology classes at universities, including Notre Dame, Tufts, and others. My book was also nominated twice for a tech award in education. I'm well known in the audio community for myth busting and for my outspoken skepticism of nonsense audio products and claims. My most recent video shows a null tester device I designed that compares wires to prove beyond doubt that they sound exactly the same. Paul McGowan of PS Audio also makes a lot of YouTube videos. More than 500 so far. But as audio professionals, we differ on many issues. In this video he posted in July 2018, Paul claims it's impossible to measure all aspects of sound quality. He further claims that you can't compare two amplifiers and tell which one is better based on the numbers measured. There are no current means that I am aware of of measuring sound quality. How we can take one amplifier and measure it against another amplifier and say this one, because that number is higher or lower, is better than that one in terms of sound quality. But I'm certain we can measure and quantify all aspects of sound reproduction other than matters of personal taste. Paul and I agree that if two amplifiers measure differently, they could sound different. But Paul maintains that even if they measure the same, they can still sound different. Yes, of course. If it measures differently, I agree. Uh, in most cases, it'll sound different. But if they measure the same, then they have to sound the same. And that's patently not true. However, I'm quite certain that when everything affecting audio fidelity is measured, amplifiers that measure the same will surely sound the same. Then Paul claims that audio engineers are unable to measure everything that affects sound quality. What they're missing is that we're not able to measure everything. Of course, design engineers have measured their audio products for decades. Later in his video, Paul claims that timbre, which defines the sound of one instrument versus another, is not measurable. When you're playing that fundamental frequency, the difference between a piano note and a clarinet is all in the harmonics and the envelope of how it starts and stops. So that's, that's basically timber, and we don't know, and I don't know anybody that does, a means of measuring that. Someday, I hope so, it should be measurable, but currently it's not. Of course, the harmonic makeup of musical instruments and their envelopes is easily measurable using common test equipment. By the way, Paul, it's pronounced timbre, not timber. So these claims are what Paul believes, or says he believes, but I'm certain that he's wrong, and I can prove he's wrong. I know Paul means well, but I was especially annoyed by this video because a man with his experience should know better than to confuse audio fidelity with preference. And he certainly should know that audio engineers can measure every aspect of fidelity. I do it all the time. In the second video posted December 2018, Paul questions my null tester demonstration shown here. Different inputs, input one, and input two. So each of those is one of the wires, and then we bring up the gain on the null tester. And again, we're able to get it to null to silence, and if you look at the VU meter, again, that's all the way down you know, below minus 20. And the uh, noise of this device is about minus 110, uh, which is about as good as you can get without like really special circuitry and a lot of really fancy stuff. Paul claims my test is incomplete, but he fails to explain how wires can be electrically identical, yet sound different. If there is an electrical difference between the two, then the null test will catch it every single time. It, it is infallible. Done said. Where the fallibility comes in, it sounds different. Ergo, there must be a difference. And indeed, there is. 
Does it mean that that difference has to show up on a null test? Well, no, if it's not electrical in the same way that you're running the test. So I say he's wrong about that too. When talking about audio signals traveling down a wire, what does, if the difference is not electrical, even mean? The null test is a standard method that's been used for years to find differences in electronic signals. It's well established that silence at the output means there is no difference. Yet Paul maintains that an audible difference can still exist. Paul, if you're so certain that your claims are correct, then you should have no problem explaining them to your fans and clients. I'm prepared to defend my claims and explain them clearly and logically. So Paul, this is my challenge. Let's have a public video debate, which I'll post here on YouTube, and we'll settle this for good. We both owe this to our friends and customers, and to the entire audio community.